Hello, today we're going to look at the neurological blueprint for the pants and pantry. The first topic I want to talk about under the neurological blueprint is diseases of the peripheral nerves. And the first thing I want to talk about is complex regional pain syndrome. Now, complex regional pain syndrome frequently begins after surgery, a vascular event such as a stroke. It can also be an injury. Another type of, of another name for complex regional pain syndrome is reflex sympathetic dystrophy. And there's two types of complex regional pain syndrome. Type 1, basically the patient doesn't have a definable nerve lesion that represents, a clinical pre represents with most clinical presentations. And type 2, the patients um, uh, present where there's actually a definable nerve lesion. There's three stages of complex regional pain syndrome. Stage 1 occurs either after the event or without an apparent cause. The patient develops pain in a limb. The, the common symptoms are burning, throbbing, diffuse, uncomfortable, achy, and sensitive to cold or touch, and localized uh, edema. Stage two, there's a marked progression of soft tissue edema, thickened, uh, thickening of the skin in articular soft tissues. There's muscle wasting, and there's development of brawny skin. This typically takes three to six months. Stage 3 is the most important stage and is the most severe. It is characterized by limitation of movement, contraction of the digits, waxing, and trophic skin changes, and brittle nails. The longer a patient in stage 3 is harder to reverse the clinical course with any type of intervention. Under laboratory and diagnostic studies, plain radiographs, CT scans, and MRI may show late findings of the, of the disease. Plain radiographs will also show osteopenia. Oftentimes, this is because of decreased movement. MRI may show soft tissue edema, the skin thickening, and muscle atrophy. CT scan may also show areas of osteoporosis and a Swiss cheese appearance that is consistent with stage 3. Formulating most likely diagnosis. Diagnosis of uh, complex regional pain syndrome early uh, is difficult due to lack of objective findings. Autonomic testing such as scintography. Uh, may, may provide an early clue in the diagnosis. Radiographic studies can make it can be helpful later on in the diagnosis. The patient's response to treatment often is the best diagnostic test. Difference of diagnosis includes central nerve root impingement, panko syndrome, vasculitis, migratory osteolysis, arteriovenous fistula, progressive systemic root sclerosis, thoracic outlet syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis. Peripheral neuropathy, venous thrombosis, diffuse osteopenia, and angioedema. Under health maintenance, early mobilization may reduce the risk of development of complex regional pain syndrome. Supplementation with vitamin C has been used in other preventive measures in fractures, reducing the risk of complex regional pain syndrome. Under clinical intervention, a sympathetic root regional nerve block can be used. Uh, for pain and the hallmark for a diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome, it is no longer considered the gold standard. Patients that have been that have had physical and occupational therapy with complex regional pain syndrome had better pain control, but no difference in range of motion after one year. Cigarette smoking is a risk factor for complex regional pain syndrome, and sensation is recommended. Other clinical interventions include tender point. Or tender point injections, nerve uh, stimulation, and epidural clonidine. Uh, under pharmaceutical therapeutics, several medications have been shown to, to be better than placebo in clinical trials. These medications include anticonvulsants, biphosphonates, oral glucocorticoids, and um, nasal calcitonin. Antidepressants are often effective in reducing neuropathic pain. Guidelines developed for complex regional pain syndrome include treating with an antidepressant such as Elvil and an anticonvulsant such as Neuron and an NSAID and opioids for those with severe pain. Other strategies have been used to include nerve blocks with clonidine, bertillium, or lidocaine with and labetalol combination. And applying basic co science concepts. Um, the pathogenesis of complex nasal pain syndrome is unclear, but it's thought to involve the formation of a reflex arc after an inciting event. The pain sensation response to injury may lead to increased sensitivity of increased axons to epinephrine and other substances by local, local sympathetic nerves.
All right, I want to switch gears for a second and talk about peripheral neuropathies. Peripheral neuropathy refers to a generalized homogeneous process affecting many peripheral nerves, with the distal nerves being the most affected prominently. These tend to occur in a glove-like or stocking-like distribution. Physical exam findings are dependent on axonal, or it depends if axonal or demyelinating. Patients with axonal neuropathy motor exam may disclose some wasting of intrinsic muscles of the feet and leg, distal loss of sensation to a pinprick and light touch and cold uh, vibration and proprioception may occur. Reflexes may become hypoactive. Generalized weakness is the usual presentation for patients presenting with fulminant polyneuropathy, secondary to demyelination process. Sensation is also reduced. Vibratory and proprioception are also out of proportion to the loss of pinprick and temperature sensation. Patients with axonal neuropathy tend to uh, present over a year. Patients with inflammatory demyelinating um, polyneuropathy are variable. Patients with guillain bray syndrome uh, six, two six weeks decline is also followed by stabilization. Under uh, laboratory and diagnostic studies, EMGs can be used to help diagnose uh, peripheral neuropathy, but is but are only needed if symptoms are severe and rapidly progressing to no clear etiology. Routine laboratory evaluations include CBC, thyroid panel, folate, and vitamin B12 levels. Nerve biopsy is occasionally uh, helpful for di diagnosing the etiology of peripheral neuropathy to determine if it's exonal demyelinating. Differential diagnosis includes uh, spinal cord process with, with acute uh, um, myopathy, neuromuscular junction disease, or central nerve process, which may mimic Guillain-Barre syndrome. Abnormal e EMG have, have the highest specificity uh, in the case of neuropathy. It, it should not be used only, though. Patients with EMGs need EMGs if there's no clear etiology or, or when symptoms are severe and rapidly progressive. Patients that suffer with diabetic neuropathy need aggressive management of their blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C. Patients with hypothyroidism need to have thyroid replacement. Patients with vitamin B12 and folate deficiencies need to have that replaced because that can cause the neuropathy themselves too. Patients with a toxic exposure to uh, due to alcohol abuse or heavy metals need to avoid contact with those substances. Reducing the exposure to exogenous or endogenous toxin is the most important step in uh, with axonal neuropathies. Patients with diabetic neuropathy need aggressive management of their blood sugar. Thyroid replacement generally helps neuropathy due to hypothyroidism. The mainstays of treatment with patients with demyelinating neuropathies and chronic inflammatory peripheral neuropathy are IV immunoglobulin, glucocorticoids, and plasma exchange. Patients with painful neuropathy have shown response to various medications that include Neurontin, Tegretol, Dilantin, Topamax, Baclofen, Lyrica, Elavil, and Cymbalta. Patients with breakthrough pain are sometimes given NSAIDs or Ultran. Peripheral neuropathy has a variety of causes, including diabetes, alcohol abuse, HIV infection, Charcot-Marie tooth disease. Diabetic neuropathy uh, is the most common and is predominantly axonal. The most, or the mechanical, or the mechanism uh, that causes this is related to inflammatory, metabolic, and ischemic effects. Other systemic disease include peripheral neuropathies, include amyloidosis, hypothyroidism, vitamin B12, and folate deficiency, and Lyme disease. Many neuropathies are toxic, such as due to chemotherapy, heavy metals, and alcohol abuse. Some neuropathies can be environmental, induced from vibration, uh, and can even be idiopathic.